evening, everybody, and welcome here in the Philadelphia Catholic League basketball playoffs. A full house, nowhere to sit, and we have the man of the hour, John Osco, head coach of Archbishop Wood, with us. Coach, here we go. Yourself against your your old assistant, Chris Rontree. What a job he's done at Father Judge. Tonight's going to be special. Yes, um, it's going to be a special night. It's you know, it's tough playing against him. I had to do it plenty of times playing against Carl Aragill. Uh, Chris, the last nine years he was here, we became best friends. Um, real great to all my kids and my family and the program here. We didn't get to where we were without him. So it's bittersweet that one of us has to go home. What's going to be the biggest challenge in taking on the Father Judge Crusaders tonight to get to the Palestra? Um, their three-point shooting and their athleticism and their speed. They like to play fast. Uh, we could probably switch uniforms and the way both of us play it's a lot of guards, no bigs, and just get up and down. Well, it's going to be fun. Thanks for having us out. Good luck. Thanks for always supporting us. Guys, back to you. Thank you very much, Bob. Uh, Archbishop Wood comes into this game as the three seed with an 11-2 and two league record. They'll be taking on Father Judge as Bob gets set to interview the coach, Chris Roantree. Judge comes in as the number six seed. Nine and four on the season, and I'm Jeff Shrilla, along with Danny Rovey as we're getting set for a, uh, a a great quarterfinal action. Oh, absolutely, Jeff. And, you know, it's just a, such a pleasure to be broadcasting in such an intimate environment here. This gym has been filled up uh, well before tip-off. Send it back down to Bob. Yeah, go ahead, Bob. Chris Roantree now nice enough to join us. Chris, welcome to the Philadelphia Catholic League Playoffs Cauldron. Tonight's going to be a lot of fun going against uh, your old boss, John Mosco. Yeah, it'll be a lot of fun for you guys, a storyline for you guys. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's not about me and John. It's about our players. I mean, he's got great players. I think we got great players, and it's going to be about them putting on a show. It's not about me and John. So whoever executes best is going to win the game. You're not wrong about that. It is about the players. And so why don't you give us one key for you guys to be successful and to head to the palestra on Wednesday night. Yeah, I, th I think it's really about two things for us. We got we got to lock in defensively. We got to execute our defensive game plan tonight with Josh and Jaleel and not allow them to get easy buckets. Um, we got to rebound the ball and finish possessions. I think that's the two things that killed us the last time. We didn't really rebound the ball against them. If we can rebound the ball, gets us out in our transition. We want to play as fast as they do. So um, we just got to really be locked in. I think that'll be the key for us. You guys have had a heck of a year, a heck of a three-year stretch. Good luck tonight, and we're excited for this one. Thanks. I appreciate it, Bob. Jeff, Danny. Thank you very much, Bob, as this game is certainly uh, the one to circle. As you look at the bracket, we uh, are you know, looking at the 3-6 matchup, and Bob will come. He'll join us, and we'll, we'll go into a, a deeper dive. But just off the surface, what are you looking for, Danny? Yeah, well, you know, like you said, it's a 3-6 matchup, Jeff. But honestly, at this point in the playoffs, seeding doesn't matter. It's winner take all. And both these schools have had their eyes set on the palestra for so long. Father Judge had to deal with a lot of adversity at the beginning of the year. But remember, this is a team that beat Roman Catholic, who is the number one seed in the PCL right now. So anyone can be anyone right here. And all that matters is the next 32 ahead. Yeah, and you, you talk about uh, they're going to want revenge because they these two opened the Catholic League schedule right here with Archbishop Wood pulling off the win. And so certainly Father Judge, after that game, re reeled off seven in a row. And they'll be looking to try to bounce back after they stumbled down the stretch. Yeah, absolutely. And someone like Chris Roantree does a great job of game planning with his team. These guys are going to be in the tightest defensive sets known to man. We saw when Father Judge played LaSalle College High School when that game was broadcast on Bob Long Sports. These Crusaders do a great job of playing defense in the 1-3-1. They can play man, they can play zone. So they're a very versatile and very gifted defensive side. So I'm going to really be looking forward to seeing how they guard people like, you know, Milan Dean and Jaleel Mathia, among a lot of these other great scorers for Archbishop Wood. Yeah, you mentioned the judge, and we uh, welcome Bob back to the booth as we get ready for a uh, tip-off. About six minutes left on the clock, and the judge stumbled down the stretch. They only won two of their last five games, and uh, of, of, of those wins, one was an overtime against LaSalle, a team that didn't even make the playoffs. So certainly that was going to be something that they need to bounce back. They only have one win coming in, while on the flip side, Bob, you got a uh, Archbishop Wood team that's won nine league games in a row, ten overall. They are on fire. Yes, they are. Yes, Father Judge has struggled, but 
you look at the schedule as part of all that as well. Archbishop Wood had the other top five teams in the league out of the way two and a half weeks into the season. Father Judge had most of those teams in the second half. Won their fair share of those games, by the way, Roman Catholic and St. Joe's Prep. So it's easy to look at, hey, Archbishop Wood trending one way, Father Judge trending another. But I'll tell you what, throw the ball up 32 minutes, Father Judge has the talent to beat anybody in this league. Well, Danny touched on this while you were doing interviewing the coaches and coming back up here, is that this is an intimate environment. When you're 8-1 and one at home, and you know that you can uh, uh, bring out the, the, the student section and play well at home, that that's definitely an advantage, and that's why you want to have one of those top seeds. Yeah, you play all year for it, Danny, and that's a great point that you make there. Yeah, you think about the other results that we'll see here tonight, the one that's already in the bank, and that's Archbishop Ryan going onto the road to a very hostile environment at Kelly Fieldhouse, beating St. Joe's Prep on a last-minute possession. Do we have one of those matchups on our hands here tonight? My guess is they combined to break the 100 mark tonight. Just a guess with these wow. two offenses. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. I think it shouldn't be a surprise with how high-powered these guys can run. I think well over the 100s. My point being, Father uh, uh, Archbishop Ryan and St. Joe's Prep did not break the 100 mark on a combined basis. Yeah, I will say, though, that game was amazing. I had a pleasure watching that with our friends at Archbishop Ryan. Um, they did a great job with that broadcast, but the game was so entertaining. Right there, we saw Thomas Silver really go off. He had numerous blocks in that game. Uh, just put on a show as well as the guards for Archbishop Ryan. So we're going to be excited to see what they can do with the blush show. So let's take a look at some of the keys. And again, apologies if you guys did that already while we were talking to our friends. Oh, no, no keys. Well, let's talk about the keys. For Archbishop Wood, this is a team led by two guards, but guards with some length and guards that are willing to play in the paint. Jaleel Bethea, top 10 player in the country, co-MVP here in the Philadelphia Catholic League, and rightly so. His wingman is Josh Reed, heading to Drexel next year. He's the guy who replaces the role that Carson Howard played at six foot eight last year. Well, you look at the numbers. He's not 6'8", but he is willing to get in there amongst the trees, team's leading rebounder. And in a game earlier in the year against LaSalle, they had a 14-point deficit at Archbishop Wood. Reed Bethea scored every point in the second half to come back, win that game, and that kind of catapulted them, Danny, the rest of the year, undefeated since then. Yeah, absolutely, and Wood really on a hot tear. Like we were talking about when you were down there, again, a 10-game win streak is, a, of course, huge. But the 8-1 and one at home is also big. I will say this Wood team runs a very fluid offense, so it doesn't matter when people like Carson Howard will leave the program because size doesn't matter. Size is not play as big of a role in this offense where you rely on the three-pointer so much and with how well these guys shoot the basketball anything can happen tonight and Jeff now let's talk about Father Judge because we have been aptly naming them guard high they run <laughs> four guards out there that are tremendously talented two seniors a sophomore and a freshman if they're going to go to the fluster, it's going to be those four guards that get them yeah, yeah I'm just looking at the, uh, the the honors of player of the year Father Judge on the first team Kaver Kennedy, the senior, he's certainly uh, you know, a guy to look out, averaging 17 points a game. And then on the second team, you had Laquan Bird and Derek Morton Rivera, the sophomore who you just mentioned. It, it feels like, it, it, like you said, it's guard high, guard you. It's going to be you know guard heavy, and we're going to be look forward to it all night long. This is going to be one heck of a basketball game. We are ticking down here towards tip. Yeah, I was going to say we have, uh, uh, I think, on a quarterfinal basketball, when you're talking about Friday night during Lent for the Catholic League that this is a time for prayer and reflection but it's also a time for playoff action so tonight I think it's appropriate that we take the the three-pointer and call that the Holy Trinity I like it how about the uh, the turnover a little alms giving <laughs> and then the winner tonight of course looking to go to the promised land the palestra to play in the semifinals next week for that for a chance to go to the championship I love that Jeff yeah. Shirilla ladies and gentlemen oh by the way the first round took place on Ash Wednesday so a bunch of folks showed up with ashes on their forehead, myself included. And yes, if you ever go back to that footage, I think you'll know what day it took place. <laughs> uh, Valentine's Day as well. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Guys, we're going to have some fun here tonight. We got just a minute or two until tip-off. We're going to take a very quick break. And when we come back, we have starters and tip-off here on Bob Long Sports. Dunphy Ford is Mayfair's neighborhood Ford store. Nobody knows your neighborhood like Dunphy Ford. Nearly 40 years. Right here on Frankfurt Avenue. Generation after generation, our neighbors continue to be our customers. 
We have access to the cars and trucks you want with financing you need. Dumpy Ford is Northeast Philly's first choice for America's number one brand. 7700 Frankfurt Avenue in Mayfair. Online at www.dumpyford.com. Come experience the Dumpy difference. You'll be glad you did. They said it couldn't be done, but somehow CCM was able to close this home in just 21 days. Carl, how'd you pull this off? Oh, hard work, dedication, grinding. Were you ever worried? Well, you know, Chloe, they pinned us in deep in the second bedroom, uh, inspection issues, but we regrouped. Knew there was still a lot in play. Well, I'm sure the Franklins were pleasantly surprised. We got a good organization here. A lot to look forward to. Good luck with the next close. And there you have it. Cross Country Mortgage is dedicated to getting it done. So, it's time for your business to renew your lease. Or perhaps you're right-sizing or relocating. This can be an exciting time, hmm. but it's also a major project to undertake. Hundreds of decisions to make, hmm. some of which may impact your business for the next decade. You know you need an expert on your side from start to finish. What if this expert had no conflicts of interest, no landlords to answer to, and if Father Judge wears Carolina Blue here tonight. And they will start those four guards. There's Nazir Tyler being introduced first. Played as an eighth grader in the Interact for the high school team. Boy, has he been so good here at the high school level. Derek Morton Rivera, he is a long wing, can really knock it down. That's your pure point guard, the junior, Kavar Kennedy. And as the ship goes, it's probably because of his direction. Anthony Lilly in the front court, and then the senior. Tough Philadelphia guard, Laquan Bird. And 
tonight Archbishop Wood will wear the home white uniforms. And they'll look to get back to the Palestra. They were there last year. They had a lead in the second half against Roman Catholic. They didn't make it to the final. It was the Xavier Brown show in the second half. He's on his way to St. Joseph's University playing great minutes there as a freshman. Here's your starters for the Vikings. Deuce Maxi and Milan Dean. Two, two guys, Maxi, a guy you want to knock down the three. Dean, a guy who can contest at the rim. To hear Howell provides a little bit of size. First year for him in the starting lineup. There's Josh Reed. Reed has been excellent all year long. Double-double machine, and then there he is. A top 10 player nationally. Co-MVP here in the Philadelphia Catholic League. Jaleel Bethea. Jeff, one key from you. As you see these two lineups being introduced, you see not one seat to be had, and you see all the stakes right in front of us. I think it's going to come down on the Archbishop Wood side, Jalil Bethea getting into rhythm. The last time we saw him here, that I saw him here against Newman Garetti, he was off the entire game. Newman Garetti went on to win that. I think if he gets into a flow, he will be the key on Wood's side. Danny, one key from you before we get underway here in the quarterfinals. You know, Bob, just really excited to see the matchup here of this high-powered Archbishop Wood offense on also the high-powered defense of Father Josh. Excited to see how they guard Jalubathia as well as Josh Reed, two elite scorers in the Philadelphia Catholic League. Lilly against Milan Dean. Dean can jump his way out of the building, and with any luck, we'll be able to show that to you all at home here tonight. Brady Joyce on the camera, Danny Rovey, Jeff Sharilla, I'm Bob Long. Let's do it. The game of the night here in the Philadelphia Catholic League. The Father Judge student section has made their way from Northeast Philadelphia. Defense is the call. Good look from Howell. Couldn't hit it and good box out by the point guard, Kavar Kennedy. Both teams starting out. Minimum. Out of guy, Bill. Derek Morton Rivera. Lily now. And that's Tyler losing the basketball. They want to go to that matchup here tonight. Lily turn around, not even close. Not good a good defense. look, not a good look, a four shot. Yeah, not at all. And when you're in the Philadelphia Catholic League with no shot clock, you can take your time with these possessions. Not exactly the smartest look right there from Lily with the jump shot. Yeah, he's on the ISO down low by himself. No one else on the opposite side to get a rebound. It's something that maybe a little jittery, a little nerves, a little rushed, like you said, Dan Danny. No, no shot clock. So Mike Green will step in for the Vikings. Looks like Milan Dean there took a little bit of a break. Well, the couple of guys, right? Green and then the next guy off the bench is Brady McAdams. Both of them can knock it down from deep. When Archbishop Wood has been so good in the second half of the season, it's been penetration by this guy. Certainly a lot of scoring from him, but a kick out to a three-point shooter with their feet set. Maybe an extra step for Kavar Kennedy, but Father Judge is on the board. Kennedy with his second defensive board. He goes coast to coast for the first points of the game. Reed, good move inside. Just couldn't get it over the front rim. There's been lots of talk, and we discussed it in our open. Father Judge has languished a bit in the second half of the season. They were 7-1. and one. They got to just two more wins from there. Morton Rivera couldn't hit it. Deuce Maxi all the way. He was hammered. I can't believe there's no foul call there. And Morton Rivera now for Kennedy. Lily. A nice More dive. Nothing. A nice dive from uh, Kavar Kennedy right there. Finding Lily coming in. Archbishop Wood now. And the lid on early for the Vikings. Kennedy. Yes. 7 0. Is there a timeout coming from that Archbishop Wood bench? John Mosco always likes to let these guys play it out. And we play on. 5.44 to play first quarter. Great cut by Howell. 
That's why you don't call timeout, Jeff. Easiest look he'll get all night. Wood on the board early here, but guys, how about this atmosphere already from both sides here? This is all you can expect in such a high stakes matchup. Playoff basketball. Bird again looks for Lilly, and that's been the idea. They want to get it to him. The double team forces the travel. Yeah, and great defense right there for number zero, Deuce Maxi. He's guarding Lilly, and that's a player who's a head taller than him. But right there, that tenacious defense just gets in the mix and causes the travel. Yeah, at one more look, though, when you get the ball, just turn and go up with it. And that was the message from Chris Roantree. Especially, like you said, with that height difference, you've got to go up strong. Reed, quick step, got to the hoop. Didn't miss that one. This will be the pace here tonight, folks. Laquan Bird. Yeah, Bird right there getting on the board. Also a very tenacious player, like we say. An all-time Philly guard here, and definitely one of the best players on this court any given night. Kavar Kennedy has the matchup against Jaleel Bethea. A little shush on his way back down the floor from Bethea. He hears the Father Judge contingent here tonight. Great defense, just not, can't stop and coming back the other way to match. This is it right here, shot making. And they call the foul. There was a lot of ball up top. Contact though as Josh Reed got into the lane. Foul called on the floor, 412 to play. A lot of contact over the back, good call. Bethea off the ball screen. Long rebound corralled by Maxi. Good find. Really good find on the cut to by Bethea. Yeah, Bethea right there. Nice, nice awareness to stay with the play. You see Maxi driving in, and he's able to feed that off. Another easy bucket right there for the Vikings. And the three, he wasn't quite square. He let it go a little early. I think if he squares up his shoulders, he'll have a better look. Bird. Guarded one-on-one -on -one by Max. That's a deep one, and Morton Rivera is feeling it. <laughs> Smiles Actually, between too. him and Bethea as they go down the floor. You know Bethea wants to go up with this one. Great find for Mike Green. Here we go. Some firepower here. Mike Green, a big three off a nice dime from Bethea. Went in and around the basket and saw him on the perimeter. Splash. And Danny, you get a chance to set your feet there if you're Mike Green, certainly when Jaleel Bethea draws three defenders. Somebody's got to be open. Great vision by the willing passer, the University of Miami commit. Kamara Kennedy here taking his time with things. That's a freshman, Tyler, and now Morton Rivera. He's been the hottest one here tonight. Good spacing here by Father Judge. Things got a little condensed, so they pulled it back. Got a good look, but it was blocked. To here, Howell. Reed, four defenders. He had the best position of them all. And Josh Reed just fearless going up with that, taking his talents to Drexel next year. He is one heck of a player to watch down low. Good move by Kennedy. Open three for Bird. Halfway down. And now Reed leads the break. Reed is so good in transition. First lead of the night. Kennedy. Great look for Anthony Lilly. And there's that true point guard that is Kavar Kennedy, the junior, steering his way into the lane, keeping the defender on his hip. Great find. Yeah, Kennedy slicing and dicing, getting into the paint. Bang! Mike Green, his second triple. Jeff, how we doing on those stats? We got Green with six, and we got three threes. Good luck keeping up. For the, for the Vikes. Kennedy, yes! You keep calling them, I'll keep writing them down. <laughs> Fish in a barrel. Bethea. 
Not exactly the best look. Looking a little bit rushed from Bethea. Father Judge in transition. Laquan Bird with the three. Bird couldn't hit it. Bethea goes up high, and the foul is called against Anthony Lilly. Catch your breath. And those substitutes have been sitting at the scorer's table for an eternity. <laughs> When's it my turn, they say. Barnes and Westfield checking in. Everett Barnes, six foot nine, 235 pounds of steel down there in the paint. That's a new force right there for the Vikings to watch out for down low. And he's a work in progress, Danny. He's done a nice job in this campaign of his, but he will continue to grow into that body. The footwork will improve. He has a chance to be really good in the years to come. Brady McAdams just checked into the game. Jaleel Bethea, he's first on that bench for a momentary break. Milan Dean for three. Hasn't been his look this year from beyond the arc. Good catch there, but that's off the knee. It stayed in bounds, and Laquan Bird in the act of shooting. Father Judge wants the goaltend. We have instant replay for that. And what are you seeing, Bob? Well, did it hit the glass first is all we're looking for. It looked like it was on the way up. Boy, that's hard to tell. Let's slow it down even a little bit more. Looking for that ball to go up, and does it hit the backboard first? I think it's a good no call there on the goaltend. One more even? It's tough to tell. It is tough to tell. You know, one thing about these Crusaders is that they are spot up from the free throw line. Their last game against the South College High School, that's what really won them the game in that overtime quarter was their ability to shoot free throws and knock them down when they need them. Bethea backed into the game. He was off for one stoppage, couldn't get it over the front rim. But this is where Reed has been so good. Yeah, Reed bullying his way up to the basket. It was a great job with really no space in front of him. 17 seconds left to play, and for the first time all night, we'll get a 25-second possession. Kennedy. Morton Rivera. Now final two seconds down to one. This is good if it goes. Wow. Eight minutes of fury. Father Judge comes on the road, delivers a statement early, Danny. Archbishop Wood has the answer, and it's a one possession game. Early call on a classic here tonight. Oh, I mean, this is exactly what you look for. I mean, just an amazing atmosphere, and both these teams going back and forth and back and forth. Just elite scorers on all ends. Really excited to see how this next quarter plays out. You guys said 100 points total? Total. You're on your way. Well, I think we're okay. <laughs> I think we're okay there. Let's see, 40, 43 <laughs> times one. four. Do the math. Do the math, high school kid. <laughs> <laughs> yep. We might get it in the first half, Jeff. That's got my eye on it. Got my eye on a quick look at the stats to the father judge. They knocked down four three-pointers on Woodside. One, two, three. So it's uh, certainly we saw some hot percentages going up early and often. We talked a little bit pregame, and we have a moment to talk about it here. Of course, these Catholic League teams worry about the Palestra first and foremost, but there is a postseason to the postseason, if you will. The PIAA playoffs, the district playoffs, only two teams from the 6A level in the Philadelphia Catholic League, both of these teams large school 6A classification. Only two teams get to the PIAA state playoff bracket. Roman Catholic is in the driver's seat by virtue of their number one seed. St. Joe's Prep, their season ended earlier today on a near buzzer beater by Darren Williams and Archbishop Ryan. That was at 17th and Girard at Kelly Fieldhouse. So St. Joe's Prep, we know they're done by virtue of Archbishop Wood being able, they'll, they'll be above St. Joe's Prep regardless of the result here. So. It's down to Father Judge, Archbishop Wood, or Roman Catholic that could re represent the 6A level in the PIAA playoffs. We'll get to that momentarily. Josh Reed, somebody's got to stop the ball. Didn't hit the layup. 
And a and Euro, uh, was that a Euro step or a uh, Warminster step? I'm not quite sure. You're thinking travel? I don't know. Let's count. A little France to one, England. Uh, one, two, three. I mean, he, yeah. yeah. Dragging the feet can always yeah. get you, too. France to England didn't take the boat. <laughs> one too many steps. <laughs> Derek Morton Rivera is blocked. That's great closeout by Tahir Howell. Howell, how about the vertical ability right there? Look at him running in transition. And Dean traveled with it. So a bit sloppy to start this second quarter. So again, in the 6A level, two teams get to the PIAA, but it's not just who went further in the playoffs. It's a point system. 10 points for a regular season win. Archbishop Wood, 110 points for their 11 regular season wins. Father Judge, 90 for their nine regular season wins. 15 points for this winner. So Father Judge would need to win this one and one more to jump Archbishop Wood. Morton Rivera again from deep. His third three. And Bob, I think you explained it to us off air in a very concise way. Judge, they need to win two games, but they haven't been to the Palestra since 1999. So they want this one tonight. They'll worry about districts and everything else that comes with it after 32 minutes of basketball here in Warminster. Well, and it was a big story a couple of years ago when Chris Roantree took over at this program. It is his alma mater. Grab along the baseline on the drive by Bethea. So we left John Moscow's staff. We all knew it would take a special head coaching job for Chris Roantree to leave the staff of one of his best buddies, John Mosco, but his alma mater did the trick. Last time, 1999, when Father Judge went to the Palestra, Chris Roantree was a senior on that team. Count it, and one for Tahir Howell. One more look, he's been doing it on the glass. Danny, he gets rewarded with some great action on the slip. Oh, what a hard-nosed player. That's a guy who you want on your team to, re to hear how old that is. I mean, does a great job on both ends. We saw that block just a couple possessions ago. Then he goes in with a lot of contact and draws the M1 opportunity. And you saw the reaction with the crowd lining the baseline against the wall as he finishes the three-point play. Just his sixth free throw attempted all year. He's now four for six. One point game, early second quarter action here on Bob Long Sports. Rocco Westfield got one foot in the lane. Kennedy, how good is he in the lane? Just couldn't hit it. But it's tipped up and in by Everett Barnes. Well, he averages a little over four points a game. He's got half his total right there. Great tip. Good defense there by Father Judge. Milan Dean a little long on both his three-point attempts here tonight. Morton Rivera feeling it, so why not? The yeah, pull up in transition. Morton Rivera, scary guy in transition, like you said, Bob, using that length to his advantage. He's a guy who moves down the court so quickly. And he's our first player in double figures. He's got 11. Dean. The offense not really running through him, but that's a great kick for Tahir Howell. That was halfway down. How does it not go in? Wow. Howell, that was his second three-point attempt of the year. He was 0 for 1. Rocco Westfield, the wow. high teardrop from deep. It's an eight-point lead, largest for Father Judge. And that's a great call. Westfield stands in. Dean can't believe it. It's not about being set here, Jeff. It's going to be about Milan Dean lowering the shoulder, and that's why that call has to be made. Yep. It wasn't hard contact, but it was not good position. Well, hard contact or not, I don't know if I want that contact. No, and, and I'm a little too old for that. Going back to the Westfield, to shoot that with such confidence, as you said, the teardrop just splashed down and really, really gets this father judge team going. Good steal. Milan Dean can throw it down with the best of them here in the Catholic League. Yeah, Milan Dean right there taking flight from the Warminster Airport, I guess, guys. 
That's a big bucket for Wood right there. They were in a bit of a dry spell. That could be a momentum shifter. Nasir Tyler, yet to really get going here tonight. It's been the Derek Morton Rivera show. And he is going right at Jalil Bethea. Reed on the other end, and he's grabbed by Tyler. I don't know if we got this on the other end. There's that pull up. And Bethea, that's good defense. But Morton Rivera is one of those guys. The son of royalty, DJ Rivera, a standout from Newman Garetti, just a sophomore and has really come into his own this year. He loves this matchup, Danny. He knows the eyes that'll be on him here tonight. Oh, absolutely. And it, that really fires you up as a player when you have the chance to play against a, a player with the stature of Jalil Bathia, the rankings, the hype. I mean, that can really be something that energizes you and the team. Father Judge assuming an underdog role in this matchup. Well, Father Judge was underloaded there on that side of the floor as Kennedy hits it. Timeout on the floor. Did they signal two? That's a two-point basket, yes. Got into the, not quite to the lane, but a couple steps inside, pull up. Got it from deep. It's a 10-point lead. Jeff, I want to go back to the other side there, the floor, where Father Judge just didn't have enough guys out there on the perimeter. They had one guy to go amongst Bethea on the wing and then Deuce Maxi in the corner. So an adroit play, maybe not how you want that defense to be loaded up on that side of the floor, but they said, hey, if somebody's going to have a wide open look, it sure as heck is not going to be Jaleel Bethea. Well, Maxi had a very clean look, and he's, you know, he's not your best three-point shooter. He's one of the lower percentages at 23%. You, like you said, you want to get it to Bethea, 38% shooter. And as a team, they're around 33%. So I think they're going to have to get a little more motion, a little more deliberate attempt to make sure that, that you get it to Bethea as, as, as your go-to guy. We have halfway to go here in the second quarter. And Father Judge, 36 points on the board. What a game. Rocco Westfield guards Jalil Bethea. That's amongst a triple team. And last stepping out of bounds was Barnes. And Bethea wants the call first on the perimeter and then against Barnes inside. And he was also looking for some of that contact that when he was tightly guarded there right. by Westfield. He's also talking about that too, that little arm check. It's a physical game though. Maxi kept the feet down. That's beautiful. Got the 6'8 Barnes in the air. Yeah, nice composure right there from Deuce Max. We know he has a great motor showing it right there on that play. The body control is amazing. And that's his first basket. He's in the scorebook. Kennedy, and that's great defense there. Barnes was not set inside the way he needed to be. Yeah, the weak side help. Wow, wild shot. But Reed got his own rebound. Who's going to come up with it? It's Westfield. And numbers for Father Judge. And he traveled. Good call. Yeah, and Westfield wanted to find Kennedy in that corner. He was in a great position right there. Just one too many steps with the ball in his hand. Substitution chance for us to tell you guys about Bob Long Sports. And if you haven't, been to our page already. First off, welcome. We'll have contests throughout the playoffs here, so make sure you follow the page, like the video. That helps us out a lot. And keep on watching along. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, and thanks for being here tonight. A grab against Derek Morton Rivera. That has been the matchup all night to watch. It has been the matchup, and if you watched the last possession when Bethea complained that he wasn't going to get a call on that triple team, this is not much contact, and they said, you know what, we're going to clamp down a little bit. He got that call because of who he is and that he stated his case in the last possession. We know both these teams are hard-nosed Philadelphia Catholic League schools. There's going to be a lot of physicality on both ends right there. Milan Dean, that's an off-balance shot. Josh Reed amongst three, and he's fouled. That's at least the second personal foul against Everett Barnes. Jeff Shrilla's official, unofficial stats, we're not keeping track of individual fouls. We're trying to keep up with the points. <laughs> that is tough. That is tough enough. 
and it feels at times, and you see Milan Dean, well, you don't see him off camera to the left, having a conversation with one of the assistants over there. It feels as if, Danny, when Dean has gotten the basketball, he's wanted to get to the hoop, maybe outside of the parameters of how the half-court offense is being run. And that's a tough shot to mix a double team. He's fortunate that his teammate Reed was there on the offensive glass. Oh, absolutely, and I think with the with the size that Father Judge has down low, that front court gets really congested. It's like you said, Bob. It's really tough to get those shots off, and also tough to get the calls. And Jeff, I like the dribble drive from Dean, right? But at that point, when you see your triple team, maybe there's somebody now that you got your paint touch with their feet ready to get organized and let it fly open on the perimeter. Yeah, he's now he hit one of two 63% free throw shooters, so right around his average for the season. Seven point game. Kevar Kennedy, Dean lost him and fortunate it didn't go in. Jalil Bethea. Bethea oh. taken away by Kevar Kennedy. Attacks the body of Malone. Oh. And now a baseball pass intercepted by Bird. All the numbers in the world for Judge. And he traveled. That might be the most exciting action of no conversion at either end that we've seen in a long time. <laughs> what can you ask for? I mean, this is about as fast paced as it gets. Both these teams pedal to the metal right there. And I'm not picking on Dean there, but it's a great defensive play to come back and make the play. Maybe you don't need the baseball You don't pass. need to force that, you're right. Maxi, that's great footwork. Yes, sir. He takes the freshman Nazir Tyler to school. It's a 5 0 run to cut it to five. Kennedy is again wide open. Not often he'll miss two straight from wide open. Yeah, Kamir Kennedy, not the player you want to leave open right there. Bird recognized the wide open space, top of the perimeter, splash. Josh Reed missed it from point blank range. I think he was expecting more contact and just got a little overextended. A near logo ball won't go. Offensive rebound for Kennedy. Giving it to Tyler the freshman. Can't argue with that second look. Well, Tyler, a nice look, can't fall. He has a great jumper. We can look to see him continue those. Double dribble. And you can just see it in the eyes every time. Morton Rivera These or Bethea get lined up against one another, Jeff. They want to go at each other. They're locked up, and you can see Roan Tree as he look at him they're standing up on the bench and saying, where's the, where's the call? And then they get it. Are they going to hold for 42 seconds, Bob? What's your take? <laughs> that would be the longest possession <laughs> of the night. Kennedy is fouled. And they have two more fouls to give after that one there. So a good foul by Milan Dean. Yeah, Milan Dean came in hard right there on Kennedy. We know he's a player that really loves to drive in an interior force in the backcourt. He's met with a lot of contact today. I'm sure he's been on the bulletin board with the scouting report for Archbishop Wood. One of the best scorers we've seen in this league. Deshaun Bea in the game. I believe it's his first action. Yep, that's right. He was in previously a couple of possessions ago as oh, well. Is that right? Ah, yeah. that's our guy. That's our guy. There you go. Danny Rovey. Played a lot more in the early parts of the season. To hear Howell really did a nice job. Took some minutes here. But Bea, a capable ball handler. And Bea picks up the personal foul in the act of shooting for Kavar Kennedy. Yeah, the right call to make right there. Kennedy, again, met with a lot of contact going in. These two shots will result in the Vikings ending this half here. Kennedy, the 72% foul shooter, got the first on his way to 100 attempts on the year. So a high volume free throw shooter. You can see why, Jeff, unabashed getting to the rim. Yeah, and let's check in with Danny. Is, has Max Mushinsky, is this his first appearance? This will be. Number 
in and out. Nine point lead. Deuce Maxi, wild shot, won't go. And here comes Judge with the numbers, they gave it up. Great luck. Throw it down with two hands, Josh Reed right at the horn. Let's get one more look at this play. How poised is Jaleel Bethea here? Uh, that, that's exactly, he knew exactly how much time he had. He didn't have to launch a three. He just gets the easy bucket and the slam. Yeah, an accurate dime right there. Down to the low block of the paint. Slam it home as time expires. Only a seven point game, guys. And that is a big turn from attempting a free throw shot to make it a 10 point game. And then Wood gives it away after a really low percentage look from Deuce Maxey. You're thinking, hey, can we add one more? If your father judge, go up double digits. Instead, Archbishop Wood gets it back to a seven point deficit. Little bit of Uncle Mo headed to the locker room. And only 12 points in that second quarter. It was really uh, a little hectic and Judge playing some good defense and certainly uh, we saw the, the three point shooting come down a little bit and the man to man defense really ratcheted up here in the second quarter. What a game. Thanks for being with us folks. Make sure you like the channel and also like the video. We appreciate you guys being here. Great viewership here this evening for the game of the night here in the Philadelphia Catholic League quarterfinals. Bob Long, Jeff Sharilla, Danny Rovey, and Brady Joyce, as always, doing yeoman's work on camera. We'll take a break, and we'll come back in a few short minutes with the second half here on Bob Long Sports. Dunphy Ford is Mayfair's neighborhood Ford store. Nobody knows your neighborhood like Dunphy Ford. Nearly 40 years. Right here on Frankfurt Avenue. Generation after generation, our neighbors continue to be our customers. We have access to the cars and trucks you want with financing you need. Dumpy Ford is Northeast Philly's first choice for America's number one brand. 7700 Frankfurt Avenue in Mayfair. Online at www.dumpyford.com. Come experience the Dumpy difference. You'll be glad you did. They said it couldn't be done, but somehow CCM was able to close this home in just 21 days. Carl, how'd you pull this off? Oh, hard work, dedication, grinding. Were you ever worried? Well, you know, Chloe, they pinned us in deep in the second bedroom, uh, inspection issues, but we regrouped. Knew there was still a lot in play. Well, I'm sure the Franklins were pleasantly surprised. We got a good organization here. A lot to look forward to. Good luck with the next close. And there you have it. Cross Country Mortgage is dedicated to getting it done. So, it's time for your business to renew your lease. Or perhaps you're right-sizing or relocating. This can be an exciting time, hmm. but it's also a major project to undertake. Hundreds of decisions to make, hmm. some of which may impact your business for the next decade. You know you need an expert on your side from start to finish. What if this expert had no conflicts of interest? no landlords to answer to, and a fiduciary responsibility to work solely in your best interest. Someone who knows the questions to ask, the levers to pull, the pitfalls to avoid. Enter the experts at Gola Corporate Real Estate. They've seen it all over the course of thousands of transactions in dozens of industries. Gola gets it. 
And what if those experts came with a team? Subject matter experts to manage everything that comes with this process. Space planning and design. Relocation planning and budgeting. Helping you manage your vendors. Construction oversight. All with zero out-of-pocket cost to you. A turnkey experience that adds real value. Value that flows right to your bottom line. Gola gets it. We've been partnering with clients like you for over 40 years, and we know what's important. Solving problems, creating flexibility, protecting and stretching your dollars. Philadelphia-based with a national presence. Get to know GOLA. GOLA gets it. When your car needs repairs and you can't wait, Meineke can help. With life's crazy schedule between work and family, you'll love Meineke's same-day service. Call today and Meineke will get your car in today. For new brakes, exhaust repairs, or your check engine light comes on, trust Meineke to do the job right. And families have been coming to Meineke for years because Meineke works on any make or model vehicle. Same-day service, value, and trust. Meineke, doing car care right. Be a part of the biggest live events. The must-see matches. He's gone! The game day celebrations. Experience live sports and entertainment the way they're meant to be seen. With Joe Hand Promotions, the global leader of live entertainment for bars, restaurants, and cinemas. Create unforgettable moments that fans won't want to miss. Keep the food and drinks flowing with watch parties that will bring customers in the door and expand dwell time. And watch as these visitors turn into loyal customers with exclusive content relationships with the nation's largest sports and entertainment providers. In over 10,000 bars, restaurants, and cinemas across America and customizable packages for every type of venue. Make your business the place for the next must-see event. Because if fans can't make it to the stadium or arena, your venue is the next best place. What does this win mean? Been with the family for a long time. With our team chemistry, it was bound to happen. Just close, baby! Such a big win from Cross Country Mortgage. Dedicated to getting it done. Welcoming you back to the cauldron. That is Archbishop Wood High School and a Philadelphia quarterfinal matchup here in the, uh, the PCL. Trip to the Palestra on the line. We're your broadcast crew here tonight. Bob Long, Jeff Sherilla, and Danny Rovey. What a crew we have here tonight. Thanks for joining us. Jeff, I know you have some stats for us, so a key stat or two, and, and then the driver. The thing that stands out to me is uh, Rivera, Morton Rivera for Father Judge, coming out with 13 points. He's been matched up against Jaleel Bethea. He only has five. We talked about that, Danny, at the top of the show, that Bethea, if he can get into a rhythm, he'll spark this team. But right now, down by seven, he just has not gotten into the flow. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely Archbishop Wood struggling to find their footing, but Father Judge doing everything they can to extend their lead as much as possible in the first half. Did a great job at the inside, also hit some open threes too. They're running a really high-powered offense. It's time for Archbishop Wood to step up if they want to have a chance. Well, and that's the thing, isn't it? You have Jaleel Bethea able to go off at any moment. You have Josh Reed that's missed two or three layups in close range. They're running the offense pretty well, and no lead for Father Judge is going to be safe with how Archbishop Wood can get out and play. Jeff, I think that Archbishop Wood just needs to be a little bit more valuing of the basketball and run that half-court offense. They've been a little off-kilter at times offensively. Yeah, a little bit, a little more patient. We saw on the Josh Reed great defensive play towards the end of the second quarter when he ripped the ball and knew he had Bethea at the other end, but he ill-advised yeah. 80-foot baseball pass. Yeah, I think that, was, that, and I think that was Milan Dean versus Reed. I'm sorry, yes, yeah. Milan Dean. So that that 75-foot baseball pass, you know, it's like a, right. it's like in the Chiefs secondary collapse <laughs> against the 49ers. There was just no way it was being completed. You're absolutely right. Danny, you know a lot about Philadelphia Catholic League basketball. You've been to a lot of great gyms. Tell me about the atmosphere here. I'm Hopefully we're bringing it to you at home, but 
compared to some of the other great venues in the league, this is a really special place. It was oh, yeah. sold out three days ago, and this place is packed to the gills with Judge and Wood fans getting after it all night. Oh, of course, yeah. And, you know, not not too uh, much, uh, I mean, not too many miles separate uh, both Judge and Wood. So we kind of got a little bit of a friendly rivalry here. Two, two classic Philadelphia Catholic League schools. This gym, I mean, listen, if I'm not in a gym called the Palestra, I'd rather be here commentating the game. <laughs> the atmosphere is ridiculous. You have two student sections going at it. A packed house, like you said, sold out three days ago. There's really nothing quite like it. We'll put a little bit of context on it, Jeff, here as well. Last year, we're sitting here in these seats broadcasting a quarterfinal game from this gym. Archbishop Wood at that time the four seed against St. Joe's Prep the five seed. St. Joe's Prep outplayed Archbishop Wood for a good portion of that game. And then Jaleel Bethea showed up in the second half. Could that be some foreshadowing to what happens here in 2024? Well, it's going to have to happen if they're going to win. And we talk about Wood. How about on the judge side, one name we haven't even mentioned, the leading scorer, Kaver Kennedy, comes in averaging 16. He has 14 in the first half, including three threes. He has been definitely one of the difference makers in the first half. Underway here in the third quarter. One team goes to the palestra. Judge looking to do it for the first time since 1999. Archbishop Wood trying to do it again. And Jaleel Bethea wants to take him there. On cue. Yeah, Bethea is really known to be a second half player. It doesn't take much for him to really ignite the spark and start firing off shots from all across the court. And to get that confidence in tight, that can certainly get him going when he gets to those medium and long range jumpers. Lily was trying to establish position. He spent very little time on the floor in the first half. And that's a mismatch against Maxi. There he goes, inside they go. He couldn't get it over the front rim. He didn't little go up quick. strong, he didn't go up strong. He faded away and didn't get the opportunity to convert. Great box out by the freshman, Nazir Tyler. What a pass for Lilly. Nearly traveled with it. The folks in white would argue that he did. Laquan Bird, great look for Lilly. He went up stronger that time, off two feet, Jeff. Assist of the night. Yeah, Bird is one heck of a dimer. He does a lot of facilitating on this offense, finds the open guy 10 out of 10 times. Milan Dean looking for Jaleel Bethea, who rises and will shoot three shots. Chris Roantree cannot believe it. A little, what do you think, was that a, a, a late? Well, I don't know, did he have room to land? Close, we won't, really we, won't, we won't go ticky tack, but it was no, close. Yeah, absolutely. And you got an 89% free throw shooter, so if he doesn't make three for three. The chant is MVP from the student section. Of course, it's easier to say than co-MVP. Well, two years in a row. He was an MVP last year. He's Absolutely. got it again this year. He's MVP all the way around. Jeff, it was one of the most difficult decisions I've ever seen because yep. you have a reigning MVP that then goes and leads lead the league again in scoring. How do you not give it to him? Then you have Thomas Sorber, who averaged all those points and, all, and a double-double, and he really, on Archbishop Ryan, willed that team along with Darren Williams. They got a good cast of characters alongside those two, but those drove the bus, and those are the reasons, in large part, that they're going to the palestra right now. How do you not give it to Thomas Sorber? And so, co-MVPs. Co it is. For all of eternity, Jaleel Bethea, two-time MVP, and Thomas Sorber, an MVP in his senior year. Deuce Maxi, good hands. Maxi tried to throw it down, and his tailbone is worse off for it. One more look. I mean, Maxi, he can jump, but I don't think you'd want to do it when it's, con you don't want to, I don't think you should go for the slam when it's contested. Especially also when you're down five at home, you got to get two points first and foremost. You could have been sent to the line for an and one if you had gone for a layup. Yeah, now he needs to convert. Big shots here for Maxi. Maxi has not shot many free throws this year. That's just his 10th free throw of the season. He was five for nine. 
He's now up to 60% on the season. Hey, that's right. Simple math, Pretty 6 good. out of 10. Pretty good. That's a shooter's roll from Maxi down to a one possession game. And he has six. Well, a lot of folks watching, we can see that. Good hands by Archbishop Wood, Milan Dean. And a foul is called. I believe it'll go against Tyler. Kevar Kennedy was also in the area. And it goes against Kennedy. Yeah, a lot of hands in the mix right there for number five, Josh Reed to run through. Just the first for Kavar Kennedy. Three against Father Judge. But uh, again, so a lot of folks watching, we appreciate it. If there's anyone you know that loves basketball that isn't watching, let them know. Wow, a jump ball is the call. That's, I think that's a good call. Bird had, yep. I think he was there and established his right to the possession. Yeah, absolutely. Two hands around the basketball. It's a great defensive play there from Laquan Bird. Such a hard-nosed player. We've seen it a lot tonight. Father Judge has had the answer with every Archbishop Wood run. The Vikings are in the midst of another run right now. Can Father Judge get back going offensively? Morton Rivera is fouled by Julio Bethea. A First of, team foul here in the third quarter. A lot of fans in white here are arguing for some of these walk calls. They believe the refs have not called. And they may have wanted three seconds as well against yeah. Kennedy. His plant foot was in the lane. It's packed house. What, what's capacity here? You guys know? Five, six, seven hundred, eight hundred? I could tell you a definitive number, but I'd say around there. Yeah, I think it's eight hundred. Great. Action by Father Judge. I mean, how good is that? And they give it away. Morton Rivera, two on nine, doesn't matter. Let it fly. Eight point lead just like that. And Rivera's fired up. He's been in Jalil Bethia's face all night. Splashing that one is a huge three for the Crusaders. Reed, floater, yes. Calming things down. He's been the guy to do that all year long. Quell the run, play off two feet, get into the lane. And Barnes, he threw that one away. Barnes was the intended target. Nasir Tyler threw it towards the baseline. Those quick five points really stemmed the tide. I love the establishing the offense down low to get the Barnes to get that easy basket. Well, I tell you, absolutely. I think scouts and coaches are going to be snipping that play and playing that on repeat for their teams. Milan Dean up and under, count it, and one. In amongst the trees. The tide I love again. Go ahead. A huge bucket there for Dean. Again, a lot of contact going up. Fearless. Jeff, take it away. I love the fact that he did not take the three. He's only a 28% three-point shooter. He was wide open, but he's a great driver, and now you get the and one three-point the hard way, the old school way. And it's, it is a tough, and it's a little nuanced up and under there, but you, know, you see guys kind of cock it way back when they go up against 6'8 guy. No, very measured and was very strong going up. Milan Dean, a big play to bring it back to three. Roan Tree taking a few steps out on the court, directing the, the offense. Well, they're running that same set, and they're getting it to Barnes. They love the matchup, but a block inside by Howell, giving up four inches. Yeah, and right Reed there. knew it. Yeah, and Reed dragged the foot right there as he was getting towards the elbow. That's the right call to make from the referees again. And, Judge Ball. And Roan Tree is giving the officials an earful. He wanted a foul on that down low last possession to Barnes. I tell you, we didn't get the slow replay there, Jeff, but it looked clean to me. I thought so, too. I think he's working the officials because that's what you do when you're a head coach. That's what you do. Get the next one. You're never going to get the last one, well, but, but you can get the next Bethea one. Bethea got the next one when he did that in the first half. Half court set. 
for Father Judge. They want to work in the half court. It hasn't been much of that here this year. I want this to be a best of three. Can we run this back? <laughs> Do it again tomorrow. <laughs> Tyler lost the footing. Kennedy dribbles into a double team. Got rid of it, but not before a foul is called against Milan Dean. One more look. Third personal foul on Milan Dean. Only the second team foul, though. Still some fouls to work with here for the Vikings. But if that's a third personal, yeah, one ticky-tack, next thing you know, you're gonna, you could be shorthanded or at least playing more tentative and timid. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Kevar Kennedy, defended by Reed. And it's going the other way. Everett Barnes picks up the personal foul. See if he gets an elbow up here. Yep, and there it is. Right there, right yeah. To the head. Yep. Yeah, that'll do it. A one possession game. Well, all night, Archbishop Wood, they've gone on runs. They haven't quite gotten it back to all square. Can they do it here? No, they cannot. Another giveaway by Archbishop Wood. Deuce Maxi dribbling to nowhere. Entering the game for Archbishop Wood, number two, Mike Green. Both teams here taking a chance to reset things. Father Judge calls a full Timeout time on the floor. Out. Chance to tell you about a couple of the folks that have been partners with us all year long. Next play basketball, an AAU basketball organization here in the Philadelphia area with some great coaches. They have tryouts coming up soon. And from third grade to 12th grade boys and girls, they have teams that compete at the highest level here in the Philadelphia area. Visit them online. They got Facebook, Instagram, all the various social media, and tell them that Bob Long Sports sent you. Great American Pub with three locations near you. Great spot to go before, during, or after the ball game. Thanks to the Hampshire family for supporting Bob Long Sports. E&M Insurance. E&M Insurance is a property and casualty insurance firm in North Wales, and they can help you to, whether your business, your home, they can take a look at your policy and do better for you. Finally, our realtor friends, Jim McLaughlin, Carrie Garen Boyle of the Carrie Garen Boyle team at Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, Fox and Roach Realtors. If you're looking to buy or sell your home, please give them a call and tell them that BLS sent you. For the record, Bob Long Sports, without a script, knows it by heart, and does it professionally. And I think that we have someone getting kicked out of the ball game. Yeah, Archbishop Wood staff is talking to a fan who has the, uh, the what do you call it, the mask just around his chin, and not quite sure what and he did or what he patron. said. I know they were sitting behind the bench. Could have been some words exchanged with that Father Judge bench. And I'm not sure they're kicked out or if they just had to move. They're taking Wood fans out of the judge section. Laclon Bird. That's blocked. Milan Dean reaches for the rafters. The pass was behind Josh Reed. Father Judge, foot on the line. Bird keeps it in. Morton Rivera unabashed all night long from deep. Yeah, Morton Rivera right there proving what he can do beyond. A great three-pointer for number 44. 50 to 44, our score. It's his night so far. Josh Reed so close with that soft touch. These are our big two minutes of basketball ahead of us. Father Judge's opportunity to extend this lead even further. And a whole Kennedy. quarter to go afterwards. The action continues. 
This is why it was the game of the night, the game of the quarterfinals. Morton Rivera, that's off the foot of Jaleel Bethea. No real argument there from Bethea, he knew it. That has been the most fun though, Jeff, has it not? Morton Rivera against Bethea on both sides of the ball. There's those two athletes going at it and it's, it's a pleasure to watch. And you can see the exchanges between them. It breaks, and you know these guys. Uh, these guys are fairly familiar with, with each other's game. Morton Rivera got to a good spot on the baseline. Bird is fouled on the baseline by Maxi. Third team foul against Archbishop Wood here in the third quarter. Another look, Morton Rivera. That was a good closeout by Howell. Yeah, to hear Howell definitely helped out on that play. Back to live action here as Bird from the top of the key. And the lane opened up for him. That's last touch by Howell. Yeah, One more comment on, on Morton Rivera here, Danny. I mean, this is the type of game. A lot of eyes are on this. It's not every day that he gets to go offensively against a top 10 player nationally. A lot of teams love him already. He's going to be a high Division I player. This is going to add to his stock. That's Kennedy on the drive. Maxi finishes on the other end. Yeah, nice bucket from Maxi. Bob, to add on to your point, I totally agree. Derek Morton Rivera, only a sophomore. Something like this, you go into this matchup knowing you're the underdog and knowing that with the cameras shined on Jalil Bethea, your matchup, you're the one that wants to show out. So absolutely, it adds to the drama and intrigue of this game. Kennedy guarded by Josh Reed. 35 seconds left. Here comes the double up top. And that's into the third row. So Father Judge trying to take the clock down. Everyone says that, Jeff. Why don't you just hold for the last shot? I don't know, because it's difficult to do against a defense this good. Tight man-to-man -man is going to cause problems. And the, you could see the official was counting the five, and then yep. he'd stop. And then he'd count the five, and then, yep, the and, and then you don't get a shot at all. Yep. Deuce Maxi, good cut. Oh, that looked like if there was no player defensively there, I think it bounces through the hands off the leg, but the foul is called. Yeah. And into the bonus here in the late stages of the third quarter goes Archbishop Wood. They just don't know it yet. Now the signal comes, two shots. Shout out to Joe from the Archbishop Wood team. Not sure of his last name, the scorekeeper helping us keep these stats at halftime. Helping me with the book, appreciate that. Josh Reed, another high value or high volume free throw shooter, but 63% on the year. Yeah, Brady what? McAdams, we've seen very little of him, Danny. He's gonna come in for this last offensive possession. Yeah, that may be a matchup thing on Kavera Kennedy right there has a couple inches over him in terms of height. So we can see if uh, if Kennedy gets that ball for these final 17.3 seconds, how tight he'll guard. Milan Dean, no, beg your pardon, that's Jaleel Bethea. A foul is called on that offensive rebound. Dean actually had just come off the floor, so that's Bethea coming from the far side block, getting past Anthony Lilly, and two shots coming for him. So Josh Reed, 0 for 2 on that trip. They'll send Bethea, who's a lot more proficient, 90% on the year from the stripe. Checking into the game for Father Judge, number three, the zero timer. Two for two, and final four. seconds. Go ahead. Four point game. And that foul was given by Brady McAdams. That might be why he was in the game, Danny, to your point. Yep. One to give. Yeah, McAdams not gonna shy away from his physical contact. 
No more to give, though, for Archbishop Wood from a foul standpoint. Trouble getting in for Father Judge. And a foul is called against Josh Reed. They can't believe it here at Archbishop Wood. That will send Judge to the line with no time coming off the clock. Another look. And did he impede Tyler's progress? Is it that the hook? Around the waist, perhaps? Yeah. That's certainly where the call came from. John Mosco, though, needing to be held back. And Tyler and gives, a, gives a playful slap on the backside of the official after he was done at tirade. That's how John rolls, you know? He, at the end of the day, he's a lover, not a fighter. Tyler, the freshman, 66% on the season from the line, missed the first. Everybody's getting a little tight. A little pressure. Down to four seconds, Bethea, and this is a matchup nightmare here. Double team comes, and that will end the third quarter. So it was a matchup nightmare, but the double team came. And Moshinsky, I think, got back, and he's the one who got his hand and knocked the ball out of play as the horn expired. Let's take a look. I mean, it's really tough to defend a player like Shalabathea when the time expires. Right there, we saw that defender come up right there from the low block, trap him, and force him to get the pass off right there. That's a great defensive awareness play there from Father Judge. Far be it from me to critique Bethea offensively, but I thought he was just going to pull up against Mashinsky. Absolutely. And let it go at the horn for how proficient he is from beyond the arc and how good he is off the bounce, pulling up from distance. One quarter to go, and it doesn't get much tighter than this. It's a four-point game. If folks out there you know love high school basketball, direct them to our broadcast, and while you're at it, do us a favor. Like the video and subscribe to our channel. There will be no live stream of the semifinals of the boys' basketball championships at the Palestra. The best you can do is we will be recording a broadcast and we'll post it at some point after the fact. So you're going to want to follow us. But the only way to watch those games is to go to those games. Buy a ticket. Get your ticket to the Palestra. And I really shouldn't need to entice you. It's two of the best nights of sports in Philadelphia, period, bar none. Let's Semifinals Wednesday the 21st and the finals, boys and girls finals on Monday the 26th. Let's set the stage, Bob. If, if you're the historian, you and Danny know this, Judge looking for its first trip to the Palestra since 1999 with a four-point lead, while Wood, one of the favorites to go all the way in trouble at home in the quarterfinals. Yeah. Well, here's some history for you. Three teams have combined to win the last now 15 Philadelphia Catholic League basketball championships. The last team not named Archbishop Wood, Roman Catholic, or Newman Garetti to win a title was a now shuttered North Catholic. Wow. And you hit your, you hit your 100 total points through three quarters. <laughs> and just couldn't get it over the front rim. Josh Reed tried to finish with the left. Kennedy. Kennedy all the way. A lot of contact there, not called. Yeah, I thought Kennedy could go all the way right there. Such a quick player. We were almost in Cary City here, and we're going to have a great look at it. And, and Bethea, furious. He got the call. I'm not sure what he, what else you can get here. Right there, Cary. Not oh. called. Oh, he had a little tuck right there. And it would have been before the contact. And there's a foul called against Morton Rivera. And it could go either way. Bethea's just as... Yeah. Guilty, if you want to use that word. It's for just hard-nosed basketball, they're, they're, they're fighting for their space, so. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that call can go either way, any day. Yeah, that's probably a good call, though. Morton Rivera not quite in legal guarding position, but there's no doubt that Bethea. Hand fighting. There's some hand fighting. There's some hand fighting, and Bethea is is getting to the spot he needs to get to. Can we use that football term in basketball, hand fighting? Is that Absolutely. legal? Absolutely. 
So this best of three, game two would be over at uh, Judge tomorrow night. <laughs> I'm sure he'd be just as action packed as right now. Four points separate these schools. Seven and a half minutes. Step Bethea. back, Bethea. Not that time. Father Judge getting after every single rebound. And a foul is called. And it really feels like it. coming out of the timeout between the third and the fourth quarters, there was conversation. There was a whistle. There was a stoppage. There was a turnover. This, there has no, been no flow since we resumed play. We've only been playing 45 seconds, and there's been no change on the scoreboard. You nailed it. And another whistle. Jaleel Bethea. I, I give the officials credit for trying to keep control. You don't want things to go completely haywire, but on the other side, it, it feels a little clunky. Feels like it's happening all at once. You know, you had three quarters to get it under control. And look who just checked out. That will be a brief respite. I can promise you that. Jaleel Bethea going out and Michael Green coming in. I think Moscow just wants to calm him down. That's a great job flashing to the basketball by Green. Couldn't quite coerce the Co turnover. Coerce? That's a Penn State word if I ever <laughs> heard. That's a vocab word. Tyler Kennedy. Westfield. Great ball movement, but it's blocked by Milan Dean. Maybe not the shot they're looking for. Dean, yes! I mean, Dean, coast to coast, he's so dangerous right there. Totally proves it. Gets up for the block, gets up for the layup. What more could you ask from your guy? And listen, I'm not saying Mashinsky needs to have a red light right now, but close to it. With these four guards on the floor, a pull up off the bounce from the elbow with a guy closing out on you from your seventh or eighth man, I just don't think is the look for Father Judge. Yeah, no, absolutely not. Uh, and right there we can see, you know, Dean get ticked up with another foul call. You know, Archbishop Wood has to understand the way this game is being called and limit the potential fouls they have that are well on the floor and not in the act of shooting. This Mike could Green. affect them down the line. And I don't have the foul count, but the fact that I don't see Bethea out there, that he might have. He's sitting at the scorer's table okay. waiting for the next stop. Got, got you. Thank you, Bob. Bird, that's off. Mashinsky comes down with the rebound. Mashinsky let it go. Make me look bad. <laughs> <laughs> Josh Reed. Wow. Up and down the floor we go on the deflection. Laquan Bird. Blocking foul is called. That's a fair call. Yep, he got to the outside hip of Deuce Maxey. Maxey felt like he was in legal guarding position. Oh, you can see that. He starts to slide. Yeah, you can absolutely see the feet move as well as Bird goes up on him. The right call is made on the floor right there. Absolutely. We'll take it at 25% here. Again, set. Yeah, just that little it. lean. Skirmish. Yeah. He didn't hold his ground. It's close, it's a tough call. And I think these officials are doing an excellent job. Yeah, absolutely, it's, it's the worst job to have, I guess. When you're in a gym this packed, fan base is these passionate. Schools that, that show out for their teams. It's a tough job to have. Got them both right when they needed it. Here's Jaleel Bethea. Bethea against the long Rocco Westfield amidst the double team. Reed with two hands. Moscow wants a foul, but Wood is back within one possession. That student section, the lid is about to pop off. Fourth quarter action. 5-10 to go, timeout. Chris Roundtree. And the two best buddies are going at it on opposing sidelines. Moscow making a statement right there to the officials. Right up to the half court line. Yeah, absolutely. Steps well onto the court and lets him know the calls he believed they've missed. Well, Archbishop Wood, they've been able to close games out. Winning every game since they were one and two in the league. 
Yeah, absolutely. This team has faced a lot of adversity. It happened early in the year between Roman Catholic and Newman Garetti. You know, after that, this team really, you know, found themselves finding their niche, I guess, and they really moved with the guys they had. Um, we can see, you know, this team does not go far off the bench with the core they've had. They've really grown a lot, distributed the ball better throughout the season. Bob, They're a team that can come from behind. Sorry, Bob, you know the history. Where does this, if Chris Roantree and Judge can win here at Archbishop Wood, it, would that be a statement game? I mean, I know it's a statement game, but where would it rank on their, on his coaching yeah. profile? This puts Father Judge, I mean, this is a, a neighborhood program. This is a Northeast Philadelphia program that hasn't been to the Catholic League semifinals since 1999. And it was a program that was languishing until he came here three years ago. He talks to John Mosco weekly about how he's going to get this program to the next level. Guys like that, Nazir Tyler. John Mosco reminded Chris Roantree that it took Archbishop Wood four years to get to the mountaintop. This would be a year early and ahead of schedule, Jeff, for Father Judge. But it would not be an upset, in my opinion, not a major one. The way this team has played all year, there was a two-week stretch where Father Judge beat Roman Catholic, beat St. Joe's Prep, and looks like the best team in the Philadelphia Catholic League. They were 7-0 and until they seven hit and that. 7-1, yes. No, I'm, I'm sorry, they, they were 7-1, seven, seven straight wins after the opening loss here against Wood, and then they really sputtered down the stretch. So that rebound here with the, the playoff quarterfinal showing some life, showing some moxie but and I toughness. But I think folks that know didn't count this team out recognizing that every game in the Catholic League is a war, and at some point, you look at the Jimmys and the Joes. <laughs> Not the recent results, and this team, guard high, is as good as anybody in this league. There's just six spectacular teams in the league, and somebody had to be the sixth seed. Well said. Seven-point lead. Largest lead in some time for Father Judge. Was that that was Kennedy, correct? Correct. Uh, updating my stats, 14, 16. He's up to 18. Milan Dean would be a huge one, but he's been long on every single three off the back iron this evening. Yeah, time is ticking right now, and Father Judge is looking to hold on to the ball here. Possess when they can. Rivera Kennedy going to take his time here well in the backcourt. No Morton Rivera on the court either. He is no, no hurry. right there by the clock, though, yep, yep. ready to check in. Kennedy lost the ball. Great defense. Again, it's Dean in the action. Bethea, no numbers. Josh Reed attacks the body of Anthony Lilly. Good no call, in my opinion. Timeout on the floor. Gives a great chance to take a look. Reed is playing off two feet, goes at the outside hip. Lily, I does, I did, I think he goes down easy. Yeah, and that's, I think that replay shows it. It's a good call, good no call. And what a big bucket it is! Absolutely, you get, you get Archbishop Wood back into a chance where it only takes them two shots to tie this game up. And we saw how quickly they scored those five points yeah. coming out of halftime. Listen, basketball is a game of runs, Jeff. Well, this is what Archbishop Wood has done now. Fourth quarter, nobody's been better in the last month and a half than the Archbishop Wood Vikings. Ten game winning streak on the line, nine of them in the league, finished with the third seed. A they're not against the ropes, but they're starting to feel the pressure coming from Judge. No doubt about they it. have not been able to get, since the, their lead in the first half, have not been able to get over the hump. And with the St. Joe's prep loss this afternoon, and if they were to win this game, Archbishop Wood to dispatch Judge, it would also lock up their spot for the PIAA State playoff. It would be a play-in game against the second seed at the 6A level from the Philadelphia Public League. No, that, nobody's thinking about that, though. Look at that knowledge from Bob Long. Lily! And that is a foul. That Under, goes against Deuce Maxi. They're under, in the bonus. He undercut him. Completely yep. undercut him. Good call. Right underneath. Absolutely. Deuce Maxi is fourth. 
So that is the That's, fourth yeah. personal foul against Deuce Maxey. And sets Wood into five as well. And that's the fourth. <laughs> Lily, 52% on the season, not comfortable here. But he knocks it down like a pro. Maybe a broadcaster's curse right there, Jeff. <laughs> Opposite. He hasn't played nearly as many minutes today as he normally does. Usually plays a little more than half the game. It just feels like it's been more Barnes and then recently Mashinsky in his place. But boy, did he look good shooting those free throws. Back to seven. Yeah, two big makes number 21. Foul called against Rocco Westfield. Third team foul against Father Judge. 313 to play. And we're seeing this at all levels. High school, college, pro. They want it, they they don't want the charge to be as much as a, a part of the game as it has been. So this is in line with what I think we've seen across the country at all levels. That is going the <laughs> other way. <laughs> Just as I said. But that wasn't a block charge. That's just. That's just. It's a point of emphasis. Moving screens. And there it is. Oh, oh man. Oh, 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 man. I love the replay on Bob Long Sports. Yeah, we got a stoppage. Let's look at it at 25% speed. I don't think he moved. Wow. Boy, that's a tough call. That is a tough, tough call at this juncture. John Mosco is as animated as we've seen him. Right in the corner there. My only ask is no technical fouls here. Let's decide this game on the floor. And Wood needs to play defense. They, they can score as many points as they want, but if they don't stop that right there, we'll get you though. Sticking your hand right in the middle. Subject to the reach in foul call. Another personal here. Well, that's a foul, I mean. <laughs> and Milan I mean, Dean is furious, just frustrated on the bench. He wears his emotions on his sleeve, would be the way to describe Milan Dean. Kevar Kennedy, the 72% free throw shooter, feels like he's been there all night tonight. He's four, four for five on the night with another coming, and the lead growing. Kennedy, what a night for this junior point guard. Reed, need it, not gonna get it. A quick hoist. He wants the basketball. It's Morton Rivera's night, but not on that one. A lot of time on this clock still. And I believe he is nothing. Step back. Josh Reed, he's been doing it all year. Salvaging a quick hoist for two on the other end. Yeah, Reed picking up scraps right there. He's done it all night. Oh, just such a gritty player. Gets it right back up. And those two are a great compliment. If Jalil's not connecting, you, you get the put back. And you keep it, cut it to a seven point lead. Could it be the night for Northeast Philadelphia? Archbishop Ryan with a game winner on the road at St. Joseph's Prep. Father Judge looking to shock some, not all. A lot of folks really liked this judge team coming into tonight. And head back to the Palestra for the first time this century, Jeff. Six of seven for Kennedy on the night. Over 20 points. It's a nine point lead. Largest it's been here in the second half. Got to get a quality look here for the Archbishop Wood. Really tough shot. 
offensive rebound. And Howell couldn't get it back. Yeah, Howell had a lot of contact on Kennedy right there. No whistle, but right there, he will be fouled. And it feels like it's slipping away. Yeah. You can just see the expressions on a lot of these Archbishop Wood players' faces. It's not over, but they're warming up in the orchestra. That's one there. So hard if you're Howell, but when you get that offensive rebound amongst three Father Judge defensive rebounders, maybe look to the perimeter there. Down nine, there's got to be someone open. It's probably a good three-point shooter based upon the other four on the floor right now. And Kennedy continues to knock him down. He's now at 23, seven in a row. I mean, he's really been the leader tonight. I mean, this offense has completely ran through Kaver Kennedy. And just the, the poise and composure he plays with has helped, you know, thrust the Crusaders to a huge lead in this final quarter. And it is their largest lead of the night. Two minutes and eight seconds to go. Got to value the basketball and get quick buckets. Timeout called after the bucket by Deuce Maxi. Deuce Maxi. Here's the other thing, and we talk about this a lot as we get another look at Maxi getting to the rim. That's another timeout called by Archbishop Wood. We talk about it a lot on this broadcast, a rule I'd love to see changed at the high school level, by the way. The clock will not stop after made baskets under the last two or even the last minute of regulation. And so, okay, a nine-point game. You need three baskets of the three-point variety. And you need some stops. And you need some stops. And the clock continues to run after each made basket. How many timeouts does Archbishop Wood have? They've taken their fair share, maybe two, three at the absolute most. And so you start to back into the math as to mm -hmm. how many baskets are you really going to have the opportunity to make. This is probably a little early for that. But if you get down six with 40 seconds left and that's where the quick fouls yeah. and you hope there's, yeah, absolutely. Uh, there's but there's been no nerves at the foul line for Fowler Judge. That's right. No, I mean they have they have played completely almost emotionless if you think, you know, from the foul line, it, you know, yeah, both these student sections screaming things all over the place. But like I said, I mean the composure of, of Father Judge is really second to none right now tonight. Out of the timeout, Father Judge struggling to get it in. Double team in a tough spot, and he stepped on the baseline. And that's what defense will do for you. Only, exactly what the doctor ordered. Only two seconds off the clock, Bob. In this game here, within nine points. All right, Green comes off the ball screen. Bethea, not even close. But Howell again, and he is fouled. Yeah, he's trying to kick that out and was that's what he should have done the up. last time he <laughs> yep. got the offensive rebound. Not, sh not sh shooting, I believe. No, not shooting. But there was the fifth foul. I didn't catch who it yep. was against. I believe Anthony Lilly. And so that'll be it for him, and Father Judge will take their minute as you're awarded when... A player is disqualified. So Everett Barnes checks out, uh, checks into the game with Lilly checking out for the last time. And that'll be 18 points for Lilly, coming in at 5.4 points per game. How many points? I'm sorry, that was a that's a four, six, seven, eight. That was that's the next eight points. Julio Bethea open for three, got it. This game ain't over yet. Six points. The clock keeps ticking now. And again, struggling to get it in, but now numbers for Father Judge. Mike Green has to give the foul. My apologies, Bob. My handwriting is chicken scratch. That was a, an eight <laughs> with a little squiggle line in front of it. There you go, eight points for Lily. But that's still above his average. That Absolutely. was my point. Just a, you know, not quite as high as. Big shots here on the deck for Kaver Kennedy. Father Judge, they came back from down late in the last regular season game of the season on Super Bowl Sunday. Forced overtime where it looked very dire 
A loss against LaSalle would have forced Father Judge to play on Wednesday night at home against Bonner Prendergast. Came all the way back, won that game in overtime. Our here is a sixth seed. Everybody's saying they're not playing well. Well, this team can play, and they brought it in the 32 minutes that have mattered. I mean, what a way to flip the script and turn the tide, Bob. Another big make right there from Kennedy, 69-61. And Reed and Bethea are behind the play. Bethea, an open three, although not that open. Now we have a timeout called by Chris Roantree. John Mosco can't believe it, but he, I don't think you're going to see him possess the ball here, really. And, and he is complaining yeah. while there's still action. The whistle hasn't stopped, and look at the head coach, Mosco. Let's get one more look here, slow it down as much as we can. And he only possesses the ball there. Yep. So while Archbishop Wood is thinking, hey, there's a travel earlier, and maybe there's a point to it, I think that he didn't really control the ball until he was down on the floor. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, it's, it's such a tough call from over here, you know, other side of the court. But, you know, like you said, that ball was kind of tossed up right there. And it's, it's really tough to see from our angle if he had full possession going down with that. I mean, nevertheless, the, the, the drama is at the absolute height here in this gym. I mean, between both schools right here, and the I think, reactions have been priceless. Yeah, and I think Mo Coach Mosco was looking for a travel. Oh, absolutely, yeah. He argued that the ball was in possession <laughs> when he came down, hit the deck, and, and then and kind of laid out like that. He, the officials trying to watch the action hasn't made a call, and <laughs> Coach is... Mosco's on the court. Yeah. He's on the... I mean, look, there's not much space here, oh, but the no. fact that he's reacting in real time, and now they're having a conversation along the in front of the wood bench. I think if this wasn't a quarterfinal game, John Mosco would have a technical <laughs> foul to his name right now. And that's a great job by the officials, keeping things. It that, is. A, 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 a lesser crew, things could have gotten out of control. I agree. By the way, this is not an easy assignment. Anybody want to go officiate this game? Show of hands. Nope. It's not me. Not me. And Archbishop Wood trying to double team in the corner. Kavar Kennedy is fouled and with the, a minute 11 to play. The ball's back in his hands. He it's is a veteran right team. Howell slow to get up. He, he commits the foul. He's made 10 free throws in a row. This is not a jinx because he's been making them all night. Eight of them have been in the last three minutes. As he's pushing his way towards 30 points. How many nights and days I'm sure he's practiced alone with his teammates, his friends, shooting that stroke, coming in at a 72% clip. This is fantastic. And by far the highest volume foul shooter on this Father Judge team. The first half, the story was Derek Morton Rivera, the sophomore. The second half, the story has been the point guard, Kavar Kennedy, the junior. Maxi. Reed traveled, and they rise here on the Father Judge side. They can feel it. A trip to University City coming their way. Yeah, I mean, just nothing but respect here for Father Judge. I mean, they absolutely willed this performance. I mean, like we said, they were highly touted at one point in the season. They fell on a little bit of a rough patch, had some really tough losses. Barely beat a LaSalle squad in OT on the road. Super Bowl Sunday, but look at them coming back right there. In the PCL, all it takes is the ticket to get in, and once they punch that ticket, anything can happen, and we can see with that score line tonight. As a six seed. The foul is given with 54 seconds left. Stay with us post game, as we will have interviews with, if we can grab them, Kavar Kennedy and Derek Martin Rivera, I'd say they've earned it. And Absolutely. then head coach Chris Roantree. Absolutely. The unofficial official or official unofficial statistics. I've got Kennedy at 28, 12 straight made free throws, 13 out of 14 for the night, and he's going back to the line for two more. And we're the game for Archbishop Wood, number 20, Ryan 
Donahue checking in, the sophomore, 6-3. Get another shooter out there to get fire off those quick threes. Absolutely. Well, this game has been sold out for three days. I think we can figure out why that was. The quality of basketball that we saw here tonight. Father Judge is padding some of the numbers late, but it was a game until the final minute. And make no mistake, six seed or not, we knew it from the start. This Father Judge team is good enough to win the Philadelphia Catholic League, period. And they're going to have a chance to do it. Mike Green got the three. Timeout for John Mosco with 48 seconds left. Again, this is that math equation that we're backing into, though. How many timeouts do you have? How many buckets can you realistically score? With 48 seconds left, Father Judge, they're a veteran team. They're going to be told in that huddle, when the ball goes through the cylinder, don't touch the basketball. Make the officials touch the basketball to put it into play. Take your couple of seconds. Father Judge has timeouts to burn if they have trouble getting it in but let the time organically tick. Bob, what does this, I know you said it earlier, assuming this score holds and Judge wins, what does this do for Wood with regard to the states and the district playoffs? Four teams at the 6A level here in the Catholic League that can still, well, could going into tonight, qualify for one of those two spots. Roman Catholic, Archbishop Wood, Father Judge, and then St. Joe's Prep. St. Joe's Prep lost tonight. They're out. They're yep. out. They were the third the team coming in. So you've got Wood, Judge, and Roman going right. for two Ro spots. Roman Catholic's going to win their game. They're up big on Cardinal O'Hara. Judge came in 20 points behind Archbishop Wood. This win gets Father Judge 15 of them. So they still out. need... So a win tonight, if I'm following your execution of this formula. A win tonight for Father Judge means Roman's in, period. I guess Roman's in already at this point. Roman's in. Judge needs to win one more. One more. If they don't, Wood gets the second spot? That is correct. Wow. Even though Father Judge would beat them in this game and advance further in the playoffs. It wow. is not who goes further in the playoffs. It's a point system based upon Do you agree total. with that formula? It's the formula we got, Jeff. Yeah. It's just wow, a this Mr. Diplomat. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm okay with I, I think it. The, I think I'm okay being a it. novice to the, uh, uh, not as experienced in the Catholic League as you two guys are, what I would say is it's a great tradition. It's problematic when you have 6A, 5A, 4A it is. teams yes, mixing and matching, so you can't truly say that this is where a team advanced if they were playing against their same classifications to earn their spots into the districts and state playoffs. Yeah. Absolutely. I get it. But you're not stopping the Philadelphia Catholic League. <laughs> Nobody one is. champion, Palestra tradition, because these 14 teams, Jeff, I promise you, will tell you across the board, great, we'll give up the PIAA then, but give us our tradition and give us our Catholic League playoffs and championship. And as we take a look at the, the bracket with this uh, presumed win by Father Judge, they presumably would take on Newman Goretti. Is that correct in the semis? Say that one more time. Who would Father? No, they reseed. Yeah, oh, there's a reseed? Reseed. reseed? There's no bracket? Oh, oh, what am yeah. I learning? No, <laughs> it's a total reseed. And so Father Judge will play Roman Catholic, a team that Father Judge beat. Yep. On their home floor in the regular season to go 7-1. No, no. Guard high against a Roman Catholic team that is reshaped with a lot of veteran upperclassmen transfers. First-year Roman Catholic guys, it will be a scintillating matchup. I'm really excited to see how those teams play with each other. I cannot wait for that game. Bethea, contact, and he's fouled by Everett Barnes. Kennedy with that miss. Snapped 15 in a row, most of them coming with less than three minutes in the fourth quarter. If it is the last game here for Jaleel Bethea, and again, we won't know that until Father Judge plays in the semifinal 
on Wednesday night, the 21st of February. But if it is the last game we see for Jaleel Bethea, what a career. All-time leading scorer yeah. at Archbishop Wood. Took over the record previously held by Rasul Diggins. And I believe the highest rated talent ever to come out of Archbishop Wood. In terms of composite 24-7 sports scores, it's absolutely correct. Headed to the University of Miami next year. Josh Reed, if it's his last great game of his career. Thousand point score, first team all Catholic. Going to Drexel next year. One of the great classes in Archbishop Wood history. A class that went to the state semifinals last year, the state final the year before. Multiple Palestra runs. But you look at a younger team here in Father Judge that is going to graduate Laquan Bird and Anthony Lilly. And that's it, Danny. Yeah, absolutely. Guard High is alive and well. Oh, they, before you comment on that, I just want to set the stage that Nazir Tyler, the 50 the 37% free throw shooter. If the doors open a little bit, this is what Wood needs right here. And he knocks it down. Go ahead, Dan. Curse the, cur the broadcast is cursed again. Um, <laughs> no, but absolutely. Um, this Father Judge team, I love. They have a great mix of players from all different classes. The future is bright uh, in Northeast Philadelphia, uh, right off Solly Avenue. Um, I mean, obviously, this team is going to be uh, like this for years to come. One of two. Stay with us, folks, post game. We'll have interviews with the winning players and coach, Mike Green, trying to make sure that Archbishop Wood can extend this game for as long as they can. Full time out on the floor. Our buddy John McBride is on the public address here tonight. And I was hoping that he would tell us how many timeouts they have left. <laughs> I, I, I'm gonna, I just feel they don't have any left. Yep, they're calling their full timeouts at this point, yep. right? There's your deductive reasoning. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing but official, unofficial stats. We can only make our best guess up here. So let's start to piece together the palestra then. Thanks to some of the folks in our chat, we found out that Roman Catholic is pounding Cardinal O'Hara tonight. How about a Garetti score? Newman Garetti took down Archbishop Carroll in what I believe was a classic. It looked that way, 89-83. Wow. Time to believe the score. Wow. ABC wow. hanging around as a seven seed. Yeah. And then finally, we know the game that happened at 4 o'clock p.m. A couple of great broadcasts going for that today. Ted Westervelt and the Archbishop Ryan Basketball Network, a couple of our favorites, and then the WSJP Student Broadcasting Group for St. Joe's Prep. Both had the call on that one. And that was a blast to watch. Archbishop Ryan won that one at the final bell. And Kavar Kennedy not giving up the basketball. Tyler wanted it, but only bad things can happen, I think, if Kavar Kennedy gives up the ball at this point. So what does that mean if this result holds? It means that Father Judge will be wearing these same uniforms, the colors, at the Palestra. I think, unless Roman Catholic decides to go purple, and you know what, they might. We'll uh, see. Yeah. They might. But uh, Roman Catholic will be the better or higher, if you will, seed. And Father Judge will be the sixth seed, so they will play the Roman Catholic Kaolites. Archbishop Ryan takes on Newman Garetti. And Archbishop Wood becomes big fans of Roman Catholic. <laughs> no doubt about that. Oh, by the way, Archbishop Ryan against Newman Garetti, the site of an overtime game winner by Tory Brooks halfway through the regular season. We'll see that rematch. McAdams. Green, a deep three. McAdams comes down with it with two hands. Bethea, slow on the closeout with Judge. And Rocco Westfield is fouled. 12 seconds to go. The Father Judge Crusaders in a stroke of history will go to the Palestra for the first time this century. I mean, just such a, a remarkable performance from the Crusaders going on a crusade of their own throughout the Catholic League. They started off amazing. They were touted as one of the best teams in the PCL. They had some adversity. They had some forks along the road to get to the Palestra, but they overcome those. And with a statement, statement, handedly win over the Vikings of Archbishop Wood. 
like you said, for the first time in the century, just an unbelievable feat. And we're a long way to go here, but my goodness, I don't know if Philadelphia could handle an all Northeast Philadelphia championship game. Archbishop Bryan on one side of the bracket, Father Judge on the other. Could it be? I mean, just the storylines in the semifinal that we have built up already. It's going to be an unforgettable time, Bob. And they do not have a timeout. They don't need to throw it in. Chris Roundtree takes down his former boss. Father Judge goes to the palestra. What a three-year turnaround for this Crusaders group. And this is no fluke, Bob. They didn't, lead, they didn't lead wire to wire, but they led most of the way. Oh, and this is a core that's here to stay as well. Like Bob said, not too many seniors on this squad, so a very special group of guys that can really stick together for the years to come and do some damage in the future. And Bob uh, said this is a year early. Oh, absolutely. Such a, a big win for, for Roan Tree and company here. What impressed you most about this win? Oh, I think that this offense right through Kavir Kennedy is just unbelievable. But really, everyone plays their role so well on this Father Judge team. They do such a good job on all ends of the court right there. We see Bob grabbing Derek Morton Rivera, number 44. He had one heck of a night. One of the most electrifying players in the league. And he's only a sophomore. He's got a lot ahead of him. He had 19, the official, unofficial scorebook. I'm looking for Bob. He's right down there. There Just he a, is, an, there he an is. off shade of blue compared to Father Judge. We'll set it down to him. It is pandemonium. Can we grab you here, Kavar? I would love to have you, partner. Don't run away too quickly. You had a big night, both of you guys did. Derek, it was your day in the first half. It looked like you really relished that matchup against Julio Bethea tonight. It was good, you know. He's a five-star, so I try my best to play defense on him and stop him because if we stop him, we can win a game. And we played good offensively and defensively helped us a lot, so we was able to get the win. And Kavar, the second fan favorites. Bob letting them celebrate on the court, knowing they're going to the palestra. Oh, well-deserved. Well-deserved celebration. All right, we'll get Bob back in there as the audio calms down. Kavar, the second half was your time. That was something special there. Walk me through closing this game out step by step. I mean, I don't know. I just had to breathe, stay focused, and hit my free throw. That was it. That was all to it. Derek, for you, I, I feel like this group has been building for three years now from what Coach has done. You've been here for two years. So take me through the journey as a freshman here at Father Judge to now as a sophomore leading this team to the palestra. No, as a freshman, we didn't have much chemistry, and everybody wasn't as good as they was now. So second year, we've been in the gym all day, working out, building chemistry with each other, and it just shows, it just shows how we got here. It does, and Kavar, this atmosphere was unbelievable. Coming back to a place where you started the regular season, you lost your first game, you go on a seven-game win streak, start to falter down the stretch, earn your first round by, come back to the place where it all started and now you're going to the palestra. How does it feel? I mean, it feels good. But God, I sure was teamwork. We start playing together, so that's good. We're going to win the chip next. And you're going to go play, it looks like, Roman Catholic. You saw them before. In your building, you beat them. How did you do it? And how is this team, in some ways, better now than when you played Roman Catholic the first time? Well, we just play together and we play defensively. We're better than anybody. We can beat anybody. I feel as though when everybody has confidence, we play together. Nobody can beat us. We're good. Say that, that. Just like we beat Roman. We're going to beat them again. Guys, I'll let you enjoy this tonight. I'll let you enjoy it with your fan club here. Congratulations. Well done. Wow. Good luck on Wednesday. We'll see you down there. Wow, Danny. Chris, you got a minute? What a moment as we bring in the head coach, Chris Roantree. An old rule in television, Chris, is never give up your microphone. Especially to them. 
Congratulations, first and foremost. First time since you were a player on this Father Judge program that you're back at the Palestra. How does it feel? Feels awesome. Feels awesome. Um, our, our guys played great tonight. We talked about before the game, even with you, if we locked in defensively and rebounded, we said if we can hold them to 63 to 65, we would win the game. And I think we, I think they finished with 68 at the end, but some shots at the end. But our guy, I mean, our, our guys just followed the game plan. We shared the ball. Kavar was great. Mir was great. You know, Quan was great. We just, I, I give everybody credit. So I, I, it's, it's awesome. It felt to us, and yes, it was a team effort, but it felt like it was personal and there was a lot of respect between Morton Rivera and Bethea and that they both really in that first half relished going punch for punch against one another. Yeah, and I think that's that's Mir growing up and maturing a little bit. You know, we've the last couple games, uh, guys have gotten in him and he's kind of settled and, and not getting his shots and stuff like that. We changed some things up this week to get him off of screens a little bit that we haven't run all year. He made his first two shots, and once he gets rolling, he's really hard to guard. But then it also gave Kavar the space in the second half, even the first half, because now they're just pinched on DJ. Um, and we just did a great job, again, sharing the ball, making the right plays, doing the right thing. So, yeah, I, I'm not surprised. I, it looks like I'm surprised. I'm just, I'm elated right now. I mean, we've talked about next step for our program, and that's what we talked about in there. This is, it's about them, but it's about us t taking the next step as a program. And, uh, you know, I think we did that tonight. We'll see who we get. I, don't, I haven't heard any scores or anything like that, but we're going to celebrate tonight. And get start getting ready for the Plester on Wednesday. Roman Catholic won. So on the reseed should be you guys against Roman Catholic, which will be a great matchup. Great matchup. And, you know, they're going to come in with revenge. We got them earlier in the year, and I know Sharif got hurt in that game and, and things like that, but it was a tight game when he got hurt uh, into the fourth. So, you know, they're going to come out for blood. Chris has done a great job all year with that team. Um, we just got to prepare and get ready and, and execute. I mean, that's, that's all we can ask for. We talked preseason, you and me, about how you and John talk often about how to get to the next step. And John reminded you it took him four years to win a Catholic League championship. Have a little bit of patience. This is year three for you, and you're going to the semifinals. Yeah, I mean, it, it, took, it took us four years to even get to the semifinals there. Um, and, you know, we had a couple big wins early in the year, right? We beat Roman. We beat Prep. Um, kind of put us off on the map. And I think people doubted us after our last two weeks. Um, we, we weren't playing great. I think we felt bad for ourselves after losing to Ryan, a big rivalry game. Um, and we just kind of rolled. We had a great week of practice today. Uh, all week we practiced great. Um, and it just led to what we played today. So we need the same thing next week. But, yeah, it's the next step for the program. It's the next step for, you know, our guys in there. I'm happy for our seniors. You know, Lily, Lily was 2-18, and 18, I think, his, his freshman year, right? And we struggled his sophomore year. So... Just, again, keep building and taking the next step. And, you know, we just got to be ready to play on Wednesday. Guard high is alive and well. Congratulations, and we will see you on Wednesday night. Thanks, Bob. I appreciate it. Chris Roundtree. Thanks, buddy. Guys? Wow, what a great interview, Bob. Thank you very much with the win. 78-71, Father Judge advances to the semifinals. They improve to 16-7 and on the season. The Crusaders as Bob mentioned, going up against Roman Catholic in one semifinal. In the other side of the bracket with the reseed, it's Newman Goretti against Archbishop Ryan. We'll talk about that breakdown as far as how we see the semis moving on to the championship breaks down. But what did you take away from the judge side as they get ready to head to the palestra next week. Oh, I mean, all I'm going to say is that Father Judge played together. Uh, you could see that feeling on the court. It was a cohesive unit through and through, led by Kennedy, but then you had great guys like uh, Morton Rivera, uh, Laquan Bird, Everett Barnes had a great game, so did Anthony Lilly. You know, everyone stepped up and played their role, um, and they also filled in the gaps uh, where, where Archbishop Wood lacked. You know, they took advantage of the transition. Uh, they hit their foul shots. Uh, they just played good, hard-nosed basketball, uh, tried to keep it clean and composed, uh, and just did a great job of that all four quarters long. So I really give Judge nothing but, but credit. I mean, this was a fair and square win, uh, making history for the first time in, in, in the century 
going to that palestra. It's just such a, a big deal for this school. Um, I mean, just a, it's, it's a party in Northeast Philly, in two neighborhoods in Northeast Philly, that is, between Archbishop Ryan and Father Judge, two amazing teams, which possibly may even meet in the championship. I mean, who knows? You really can't rule out a, a Crusader team against the Kaolites. They'd already beat them before. We know it's hard to beat a team twice, and, you know, having Sharif Jackson back uh, will definitely change the storyline a bit. But I think that this, uh, this Judge team is gritty. They play with heart. They play with some fight. Uh, and that's going to be a great game to watch from University City. And Judge snaps... Archbishop Woods, 10-game winning streak, nine of them in the league. With the loss, Archbishop Wood drops to 15-8 and eight on the season. They were 8-1 and one at home. They dropped to 8-2. and two. But as we talked about during the broadcast, their season is not decided yet. They, yep. with a loss here, depending on how Judge does, because of the points and because of the Catholic League system of advancing into the district 12 or to the district playoffs is up in the air a judge win archbishop wood is done and that would be the last we saw of jaleel bethea and of course his uh, his counterpart josh reed what will you remember about their careers if in fact this was the last game we'll see them play in high school i mean really both of them two electric players at least with bethea um this time a year ago seeing the way he took over the gym against st joe's prep will be an all-time memory um, it really just was spot up from three. Uh, well, I'll remember him as one of the best shooters of all time. Uh, you know, as for Reed, another amazing player uh, for this Wood team. And I'll, I'll remember him as one of the best finishers of all time. We saw it today, the work he put it on the glass. A lot of big offensive rebounds, putback attempts, defensive rebounds. He's just a hard-nosed basketball player. I love his game. I love watching him play. And he's on the big things uh, in the CAA with Drexel. Uh, they're having a good year now, and they're loading up with a lot of talent from the Philadelphia area, recruiting this PCL very heavily over the past couple of years. Uh, he'll be a part of a great squad. And then for Bethy, I mean, the chance to take his talents down to uh, Coral Gables. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say South Beach, but Coral Gables is the real <laughs> neighborhood <laughs> of the Canes. Uh, the fact that he'll be able to go down there to Coral Gables uh, and really do his thing will be amazing. Uh, you know, we'll be looking to see him right as a freshman. I'm not, I'm not sure if my earplugs just got knocked out. Not quite sure if I'm on the air. I think you're all go ahead. Good. Yeah, you're Everybody's still on good. The air. Yep. And now I'm here. Ah, thank you, thank you. Uh, we Did were it, was it as chaotic? Did it look as chaotic no, as it was? It, look, it looked great down there. When we watch back the replay, make sure you share it with all the friends and family basketball fans. You did a great job down there, Bob. Uh, Danny and I were just talking about Judge looking ahead. We're, we talked. We touched on it briefly during the broadcast about Wood having to sweat out and see what happens in that semifinal with Roman Catholic. They'll become big Cahalite fans. Yep. If, if Roman can win, then we will see Bethea, and we will see uh, Josh Reed play one more game along with the other uh, teammates. Reed, as you talked about, Danny, he had a, a, a big night, 19 points, crashing the boards. Bethea, he had five in the first half, had a couple of buckets early in the second half, only finished with 15 points, so you'd hate to see him. I mean, it, this is what it's all about. You, there has to be winners, there has to be losers, and you know, Judge certainly... Uh, has an opportunity to take that next step, as you talked about, Bob. But on the other side, we almost want to see the history with uh, Bethea and see what he could do with one last ride, and it, that would come at the expense of Judge if they were to lose in the uh, sem uh, semifinals against Roman Catholic. Absolutely. What a ball game, guys. Such a pleasure. Jeff, that comment about not giving out your microphone, that was for you, partner. Ah, thank you very much. The TV veteran that you are. Thank you so much. I have a couple quick, let's just run down the uh, the stats real quickly. Officially unofficial, Reed, I said, at 19, but they have 15. Maxie with 10. Green had 11 for Archbishop Wood. Those are your double-figure scores. And, and Father Judge, Kaver Kennedy with 33 points. He at one point had 15 free throws made in a row. Really lit it up, his 72% free throw shooting. Bob, as you said, his volume was just off the charts. In the last three minutes of the game, when the, uh, the Crusaders went to the line, they made 19 out of 22. They were on fire. Another high scorer was uh, Morton Rivera. He came in with 19 points. And then I said, Anthony Lilly, sorry, buddy. I had you in double figures, but that was because of a chicken scratch. <laughs> he finished with eight points on the night, and with that win, the, uh, the, the, the Crusaders win this ball game 78-71, improving to 16-7 and on the season and a trip to the promised land. We talked about it at the beginning. They're going to the promised land to, to see the Palestra for the first time in more than 20 years. Hey, Jeff, you want to know what it took them? 40 days and 40 nights to get there. <laughs> 40 days.
and 40 nights of Philadelphia Catholic League regular season basketball. That's a great call, Aunt Danny. We start on January the 2nd, and we end around February the 10th. Math a works fortnight. out. It checks out. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, great job. Wonderful crew. One Partnership. More, one more reset on your broadcast schedule of what fans can expect as you head towards the Palestra. Sure. Not live, but certainly available Available in the, in the rebroadcast. Only way to watch the games that night is to go to the games. Buy the ticket. Go to the Palestra. Sell it out. I know it'll sell out, so just be one of the folks that have the tickets. That's better. That's more fun. And then sometime the next day, the games will be available on our YouTube channel. But that'll be long after you know the result, and there will be no, you know, no, no mystery in it. So go to the games. Go to the games. But those fantastic finishes will be available, as you said, the semifinals Wednesday, February 21st. And That's then right. the finals the following Monday, the 26th. Following Monday. The two, my favorite, my two favorite sporting nights of the whole Philadelphia sports calendar. Yeah, absolutely. Anyone. So check it out. But yes, best way to figure out where and when we're going to be is to follow the channel. Is subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're on Instagram and Twitter as well. If you liked what you saw tonight, make sure to give us a follow. Brady Joyce, all-star cameraman. Didn't miss a shot all night. That's no surprise to anyone. Thank you for being with us. Jeff Sharilla. Boy, it's been wonderful working with you throughout the year, last couple of years. It's Th been fun. Thank you for the opportunity. Got the last second call, and I said, I, this is a great crew, and I, it's a great game. I, I didn't have a ticket. I wouldn't be here without you, so thank you. <laughs> That's good. That's right. And Danny Rovey, our senior broadcast specialist from LaSalle High School, going to be doing it next year at Syracuse. I know we're still not done yep. working <laughs> together, but it's just been a blast doing these games with oh, you. Oh, absolutely, Bob. These are the ones we'll never forget. For our whole Bob Long Sports crew, I'm Bob Long saying so long from Warminster. What a night. Father Judge goes dancing at the Palestra in the semifinal. Have a great night, everybody, and we'll see you soon.